I want to know how this man has so much power over people. But he only reaches the lower classes, right? People with no money, people who don't have ambition. They're already in first world countries now, in the United States and Europe. Wherever Adir goes, his gang only gets bigger. When you were sent to prison, Bishop, many people thought that all was lost. We'll always be an easy target of hate for certain people. We need to be ready for anything, right? Adir Macedo has no idea what's coming. We still have more than enough ammunition against him. This thing here doesn't work. This thing isn't the saint at all. Did you even watch last night's program? No. Why? A bishop of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God incited controversy and indignation across the country. What's he thinking? That he can disrespect a Catholic symbol and get away with it? Thanks to him kicking that saint, everyone hates us now. I told you many times we'd never have everyone on our side. I don't think I've ever seen a man slam so hard. This guy's getting what he deserves. I'm making sure that this time he's not just spending 11 days behind bars. What is this? This is your date with the justice system. And why are these men carrying guns? Because that is how we treat gangs. God is with me too. Do you think that God is only with you? So are these the tapes? Isn't that what you wanted? A reason? This is all you need to put an end to a dear Macedo in the Universal Church. I am being messed! It's a new lawsuit every day! There's been a tragedy. A roof collapsed. It was the roof of our church in Osasco. The church was packed. He's hit rock bottom. It's all over. Nobody can get back up after such a tragedy. We have endured all of it. All of the injustice, rumors, and persecution. And in no way, ever, have we tried to get back at anyone. I made it here because of my faith. And my faith will continue to guide me. When you make a mistake, there's only one thing you can do. Very good evening to all. Welcome to the program Getting Out of Depression. It's a pleasure to be back with you with one more program and with one more story of someone who overcame this sickness of depression. You know that in our days, depression is a sickness that has been passing people through people, generation through generation. It's a sickness that doesn't choose age and doesn't choose family or background. And maybe you are watching me in this moment, you are, you are victim of depression. Like the story that we're going to watch today of Sandrika, that because of her depression, the only way that she had to get rid from that depression was to be addicted to alcohol and to medicaments, né, to pillars, and also to drugs. Because she tried in many ways to get out, to get... Uh, read from this depression. And I'm going to show you the story because depression is like this. When it starts working in the life of someone, the tendency is the person to go down and down and down and down. And that's why many people start being addicted to drugs, to pornography and other, and other things. And there are people that sometimes went out even committing suicide. If you are watching me depressed, I'm, I want to tell you that there is a solution for your problem. And we are here to tell you that it doesn't matter you who you are, God can change your life. If you'd like to be in touch with us, if right now you are facing a problem in your life and that problem has been too heavy for you, has been too hard for you, you, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to deal with this situation, please give us a call. Our telephone number is 08612-1255. Also, down of your screen, you, we have our WhatsApp. If you'd like to send us a message or audio, or if you'd like to call us on WhatsApp, you, you can do so. Or if you are watching me through the Facebook, you can send us a private message. And we're going to have the pleasure to reply to you and above all, to help you. Because we are here to help you. We are here to tell you that there is cure 
for depression. Watch the testimony of Sandrika and we'll be back with you straight after. My name is Chandrika Carter. I was addicted to selling drugs and gambling. Um, I used to go to state to state trafficking and one time I came to my residence and I had a gun put to my head by the police and I went to jail. When I went to jail, I stood in jail for two weeks. I was facing 25 years to life. After receiving a sentence of 25 years to life, Chandrika fell into a deep depression. And I fell into a deep depression stage because I didn't know what to do. I had no one to turn to. I was facing 25 years of life. All the questions that was going through my mind was, who's going to take care of my kids? How am I going to be here? How can I be this single mom and solely provide for them? And this is my outcome. I'm addicted to drugs. I'm selling drugs. But yet I'm facing 25 years. I had no family or friends. No one understood me. Due to the depression, Shadrika became addicted to painkillers and drugs. I started taking painkillers, and at first it would start off as one and two, then it moved to three and four. I was addicted to Percocets, Somas, um, I was taking Xanax, I was even smoking weed. Every once in a while I drank alcohol. And the hardest one for me to kick was painkillers because I was in a bad car accident and my mind, I thought I needed it. My body craved for it. Even if you try to kick it, you'll throw up and go through bad withdrawals. And it was just, for years I was taking and taking. I had the addiction for a little over two years. First, it started off as using it as doctor prescribed. With depression, I started taking more. Then it became recreational because everybody I knew was taking it. So even if I go clubbing or I go over to friends' house, it was always there. I didn't want the same thing for my kids. I knew something had to change. It was just a continuous cycle over and over and over and over again without throughout my whole family. It was just continuing, continuing. Um, my mom was addicted to alcohol. My dad was addicted to crack cocaine. So my grandmother raised me, but even when my grandmother raised me, everyone around me either used or sold drugs. Back then when I had a problem, I didn't know how to face it. I didn't have the strength to face it. I ran for me and drugs became my enabler. They made me feel nothing. Like I, I didn't think about my problems. I didn't think about anything. It was just a high, like it was an ultimate high. Um, I didn't feel nothing. I became numb. I became numb to love. I became numb to being a mother, being a sister, a daughter, a person. I just feel like I was alone. When I first started coming to church, I'd come maybe once or twice a week. And But my youngest daughter started coming seven days a week. She was faithful with coming, coming, coming. And I was lacking because I had bad experiences with churches before where I was judged, what I wear, how we talk. And I'm like, okay, I don't know if this kind of church is, I'm gonna be welcome. So I had my guard up when I first started coming to the church. And after about two months, my daughter started coming and coming. She was like, mom, you really need to come more, come more. I started talking to the pastor and explaining to him how I got into gambling and to drugs. And he told me to start coming to Friday and doing change of prayer. So I started doing it. And I want to say about eight months into the church, I just completely stopped everything. Um, I got a job. <laughs> I'm a supervisor. I have 13 employees under me. Um, I don't even think about gambling now. It, all taking pills, it's, it's gone. No more weed, no more pills, no more gambling, nothing. I don't even have the urge for it. I know for sure, if it wasn't for Universal Church, I wouldn't be saved. My kids wouldn't, or my husband. We come to church faithfully now. I mean, we're not perfect, but we're working on us. We are back with your program and you saw her testimony. You saw how wonderful her life became in the moment that she found this God. What I'm here to tell you and what we are, we are here to try to tell you is that God is not religious. God is not, you know, church. I'm not here promoting a church. I'm not here to promote the religious. I'm here to promote a God who can change your life. Because sometimes you knock at many doors and all those doors are closed. Many times you have been, you know, trying to figure out how can you 
come out of this problem, like the case of Sandrika, she went up in addictions because of her problem, because of her depression. And maybe you are going through the same way. You are start being addicted. You are start, you know, um, going out, go to parties, go to places to try to get happiness. And you end up more sad and more depressed. You know, you don't have nothing to lose of visiting us and experience the power of God. What I'm here to tell you is that there is a God who can change your life. And God don't change the life of the people tomorrow. God wants to change your life right now. And that's why before I end this program, I would like to invite you for you to pray with us. If it's possible, prepare a bottle of water like this one that I have in my hands or a glass of water and we're going to join our faith together. You know, Jesus said, where are two or three or more agreed something here on earth will be agreed in heaven. So what you have to lose by praying with us? Doesn't matter your religious, doesn't matter your, your, your background, even if you don't believe. Maybe sometimes you say, I don't believe in this. I don't believe in those stories. But my question is, what do you have to lose by trying that? You tried many things. You knock at many doors. So this will be one more door. But I can guarantee to you that after this prayer, something different will take place. Okay? I'm going to give you some minutes. We're going to place a spot that speaks about depression. And straight after, we're going to join our faith together. Prepare a bottle of water, a glass of water, and we're going to pray to the living God. The moment that you drink this water will be holy medication to heal you and to give you the strength for you to start a new life. Stay with us. Depression. The state of feeling very unhappy and without hope for the future. While we all feel sad, moody or low from time to time, some people experience these feelings intensely. For long periods of time, weeks, months, or even years, and sometimes without any apparent reason. Depression is more than just a low mood. It is a serious condition that affects your physical and mental health. And the time. Be okay. No hospitalization. No medication. Free of charge. Prepare now for the moment of prayer. My God and my Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in this moment, my God, we join our faith together. I, myself, with this man, this lady, this young person, doesn't matter who they are. Or for, for instance, for this mother or for this father, my God, that are praying for a family member that is depressed. Oh, Holy Spirit, and I pray right now, wherever my voice reaches, your spirit, will reach this person to touch and to transform. You said one occasion, I am the water of life. And we lift up this water to you, my God, here in the studios with the water of the people that are watching us. And I bless this water, determined that this water in this moment will become holy medication. For the moment that this person drink this water, this person may find peace, joy, and happiness. Oh Father, I determine right now in the name of Jesus Christ, let this water to be your spirit, let this water to be your power, to be your presence in order for the miracle to take place upon this person's life. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, my God, that is what I determine. And if you believe, say Amen. Drink a little bit of this water right now. And now you are free in the name of Jesus. I bless you. I stretch my hands to you. 
and with the authority that Jesus gave me, I determine that you are free in this moment from this problem. I determine that you are free from this situation. I determine that this spirit, this, this sadness, this weakness, they will live your life. And this moment you receive peace, joy, and strength. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you believe, say Amen. And you can open your eyes. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. How, how, can, how you are feeling? I believe that in this moment you are feeling stronger, lighter. And that is just a little bit of what God wants to do in your life. If you'd like our help, tomorrow, Friday, in all UCKJ's Help Center is the day that we fight against depression. If you'd like to visit us, you will watch me in Stockholm. Our, our headquarters is situated at the Birgayasgotten 106. Here in the heart of Stockholm, we, our, our services are at 10 o'clock in the morning and also at 7 o'clock in the evening. You can come to talk to me or to talk to one of the pastors and we're going to have the pleasure to help you. And you can be able to participate in one of our services where people have been coming and they have been free from depression. A prayer, you know, a treatment that gives results. Like happened in the life of this lady will happen in your life. If you'd like more information about us, you can visit our website, www.uckg.se. There you have all other locations in Scandinavia, such as Finland, Norway, also Denmark, as also in Gothenburg in Sweden, where we have also this great treatment, and also all over the world where there is a UCKG Help Center, okay? It was a pleasure to be with you. May the Lord of the Bible bless you all, and believe that from today on a new life starts from you. God bless you. Bye-bye.